from Boeing's future, I'm joined by J.P. Tristani from New York. J.P. is an aeronautical engineer and a former commercial pilot. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Roshan. Glad to be here. Now, as the investigation in Iran continues into that fatal Ukrainian Airlines incident involving a Boeing 737-800 jet, what does this mean for Boeing's outlook? Well, it's very bad, as just been explained by your former uh, individual speaking. But if you look at the moving average of uh, Boeing right about this one-year mark of when that crash has uh, started to occur between uh, Malaysia and the Ethiopian one, uh, it shows that uh, Boeing stock went down 28 percent. That's a serious hit by any measure. We also have some reports that on the business scale that Boeing's problems this year could affect the U.S. GDP almost towards a 1 percent hit. That is nothing to sneeze at. That is very, very serious to Boeing. And people certainly refer to the 737 MAX planes, the ones involved in 2019's fatal crashes, as the workhorse plane of the industry. So where do things currently stand in terms of the status of this fleet and, and what sort of progress we're seeing with regulators? Well, a problem exists with the FAAs going through a recertification process and Boeing's fix of what they've also done to that MCAS, which is the malfunctioning flight control system. Now we've got constant reports that one that's going to be ready by February to go on a line. It's going to be worried by uh, June. Uh, they have a simulator problem. But uh, today or yesterday, Boeing finally admitted that the pilots who are going to be operating the MAX 8 will undergo full simulator training. That's a full motion simulator. That's something that they had not agreed to prior to that. But now they are recommending all the airlines to do that. Well, that brings out another problem of how many of those simulators available are to train these pilots in that particular immediate action item. And also, you have along with this new training that's going to occur is a uh, redoing of the emergency checklist. One thing has led to another. It's almost like dominoes falling. So then with these changes, we know the airlines have been scrambling for those 737 MAX simulators that you mentioned there. Does that go far enough, though, to not just ease the minds of regulators, but some of these passengers? And what more needs to be done? Well, the biggest problem that Boeing and the FAA has, Boeing has a problem with what they did initially in introducing this. The FAA has a credibility problem that has affected them throughout the world. But the bottom line is the passenger's acceptance once the FAA says the aircraft is fit to resume scheduling. You don't want to see passengers lined up to go on a flight on their own vacation and one of the passengers looking out and saying, what kind of an airplane is that? And the agent says, it's a Boeing 737, very reliable airplane. And the passenger then says, is it a Max 8? And all of a sudden the agent has to say yes or look shocked or whatever because it is a max eight and if that passenger says i'm not flying it you've got a real serious problem and we certainly saw that that did end up being the case for dennis mullenberg when he had to step down in the light of this tra of the two tragedies so what would you say are the biggest challenges then that dave calhoun is inheriting as he comes on as ceo credibility the credibility for boeing which is in a hundred year company is just about on the onset of aviation their reputation was brilliant. I've flown many Boeing products, both militarily and also in the civilian world. It's an outstanding company. But somewhere along the line, they moved their, they lost their way. I think its roots probably started to occur when they moved their headquarters from their manufacturing base in Seattle and moved it into Chicago. And they lost their problem of being an engineering and piling, a pilot and manufacturing company and moved into something else coming out of the Chicago office of merely the bottom line of profits. I may have lost their way there. I mean, and that's so, a problem for Boeing to reconnect. And we've certainly seen not just with those moves, but also with the grounding of the 737 MAX. Rival Airbus delivered 863 planes last year compared to Boeing's 345. Together they make up 91% of the commercial aircraft market globally. How is the competi competition cashing in on Boeing's issues? Well, totally so. You just gave the statistics. Their Airbus is now outdistanced Boeing in selling of aircraft. And that difference in the sales 
is remarkable. That's a huge problem. Also, you're going to be facing it this year if the MAX 8 does not come back online on schedule, you're going to have airlines forced to meet ever-increasing passenger counts, and what they're going to do is go to either leasing and purchasing Airbus. And so Boeing this year, as I said, their problems can result in an actual loss in GDP of uh, close to 1%. By any stretch of the imagination, Boeing has got severe problems in viability and being a credible aerospace corporation with a once brilliant reputation. J.P. Tristani there.